Hey everyone, it's me, Curtis Parody. Well, The Sims 4 Get to Work comes out in one day. That is March 31st of 2015. If you have not already checked it out, you can check out all the videos that I've created about it. But today I'm going to be going over the pros and cons of the brand new game as EA sent me an advanced copy of the game this weekend. So here we go, the pros and cons, the things that I liked and I didn't like about The Sims 4 Get to Work. So I've created a document and let's go down from the top to the bottom starting with... Well, the pros. The number one thing to talk about here, the many new items inside of the expansion pack. If you were someone like myself who was saying, hey, there's a lack of items in the base game for The Sims 4, well, look out because the expansion pack includes a bunch of new items. Of course, there's so many cool designs that you can make with these brand new objects, so many new possibilities. It's awesome to see. But of course, let's jump into the work-related stuff because of course, you can go to work with your Sims for the very first time. You can go to work as a doctor, as a detective, or you can go to work as a scientist. It's the first time you can actually go to physical work with your Sims, except for of course, the Sims 3 ambitions, though that doesn't necessarily like equate here because with that game pack you kind of went around to different locations doing your job in this one you actually go to a specific building so if you happen to be in the doctor career well of course you'll go to the hospital for the first time while well, there you can of course cure sick patients and you can even deliver sim babies for the very first time that's the first time in any sim game that you can actually deliver babies. Next up, there's the detective career. This one's really cool because you get to actually work at the police station while you're there. Of course, you'll be able to look at a ton of different crimes. You can solve different crimes and you can even interrogate different suspects. So what, whether you want to be the bad cop or the good cop, good cop, bad cop, whatever you want to be, you can be it as you are a detective inside of The Sims 4. Next up, as a scientist, you can craft brand new inventions using the Invention Constructor, which is kind of like a 3D printer inside of the game. It's super fun to use. You can create a bunch of different objects that you can then use inside of the game. It's tons of fun and provides a multitude of different hours worth of content inside of the game. I think that's one thing to note here. This brand new expansion pack adds so much to the game. It's awesome. If you thought The Sims 4 was getting a little boring, this is the expansion pack for you because it will revitalize the entire game for you. It kind of touches on like every aspect of the game. Now, of course, touching on the retail aspect of the game here because you can open your very own business inside of the game and you can sell anything you want to. Now, of course, for my first round, I kind of went into the sort of electronic store aspect because you all know I love my electronics. So you can sell any sort of item in the build menu. If you happen to be a painter, maybe a sculptor, any sort of, sort of activity based uh, person, that's a bad description, but you know, you create anything inside of the game Well, you can sell that with your very own business. It's kind of cool. You can purchase a retail lot for yourself. You can then of course build it however you want. You can renovate it. You can destroy the whole thing and build it from scratch, which is pretty freaking cool. So you can create the shop of your dreams. And if you happen to be interested, you can actually live on the lot for a multiple uh, amount of days. Though of course that may affect the people that are left back at your home lot because your home lot and your retail lot cannot be the same. That is one thing to note, at least I have not figured out a way to have a home business. I don't think it's possible within this game. Another cool thing here, the aliens inside of the game. You can not only interact with different aliens, but you can even create your very own inside of Cass. It's kind of fun. I kind of played around with that in my Let's Play episode. Though to note about that, the aliens do have a limited amount of clothing that you can use on them. You can't use any of like the sim clothing. They kind of come with their very own suit, sort of like of armor. So be aware of that. But they do have some cool skills. They can do like some mind reading stuff. And they can of course show off their probe to any unsuspecting sim. It causes a really interesting response. So make sure you check that out inside of the game. There's also a brand new photography skill. This comes in handy with the detective sort of career track here. But of course your sims can take advantage of it if you buy them a camera. It basically allows you to sort of select it and like take a photo. Then it opens up this brand new window that you can then pan around around in and then grab a snapshot of the sim world. It's kind of interesting and if you happen to be painting you can even capture lifelike photos in the same sort of aspect. Adding to the skill list here there is a brand new baking skill inside of the game and a whole baking system. You can bake a number of different objects and items inside of the game then you can of course open your own bakery and even sell those objects to any sim who walks by. It's really interesting to sort of see the aspect that you can take anything inside of the game and sort of sell it. One of the cool things I played around with in my Let's Play is sort of opening a clothing store. Anyone who is interested in casts and really loves sort of designing the way sims look, 
I think this is a great way to sort of bridge the cast world and the sim like live playing world together because you can not only design your very own looks for the sims but you can then put them on a mannequin and then sell them to other sims. It's pretty great. I can see people who really love cast would love this brand new feature. Someone like myself who doesn't really get cast, well don't worry there are pre-built in sort of uh, looks for the mannequins so you can just click on the mannequin and say well dress as formal or dress in swimsuit. Those are the basic pros that I've had with the game. I think the game's really fun. I kind of got sucked into it the first day I kind of got it from EA. I was sucked in and I was just playing and within a number of minutes, it felt like minutes, sorry, hours had gone by. So it was it was really interesting to see me get sucked back into the game because sometimes I do have a, a have like a bad sense of sort of getting pulled away from the game a little bit. I kind of get bored of it in sort of aspects, but this new expansion pack really opened it up, made me want to keep playing. But of course we do have to talk about the other side of here, the cons. Now the, the list is considerably shorter, so be aware of that. First things first, you can't actually individually price objects. When you set something for sale, it is set at the same markup as the rest of the items on the lot. Whether that be a 5%, 15, 20, 50, or 100% markup, all the items will be sold at the exact same markup. So if you wanted to sell a bunch of electronics and then you wanted to say, hey, have this big screen TV on the wall and say, be like, that's a 100% markup. You can't do that. Everything's got to be 100% or everything's got to be like 20%. There's no differential, which is unfortunate because in The Sims 2, open for business, there was a way to actually differentiate between the pricing. Next up, whether or not this is a feature or not, I could not figure out how to do it. You can't lock doors inside of The Sims for Get to Work. This becomes annoying if you create a retail space that also has sort of like an employee lounge off to the side. You'll notice that Sims who are not supposed to be in said employee lounge or in said employee lounge. This becomes a problem if you have a lot like the lot that I created in which it has like a whole upstairs area with a kitchen and a dining room and a living room. You'll notice that people that are in your store will just walk upstairs and then they'll be sitting in your living room. It's kind of annoying. I don't know why EA didn't include this and if they did, I can't figure out how to work it. So it needs to be a little bit easier to understand if it is built into the game. After that, it is actually kind of hard to sell items to customers. I don't know if this is just because my sim is inexperienced in selling items or I'm just doing it completely wrong, but I found it really hard to actually sell items to sims. It took forever. In a regular day with my shop open, I may sell like three or four items and that was it. And that includes having like a full retail staff to help me out and like push product on people. It became incredibly hard to actually sell things. I tried at different markups as well from 100% all the way down to 5% and it didn't really change the way that people were interested in the product. I assumed that at 100% it would be very hard to sell an object and at 5% literally people should be picking them up and like trying to buy them as like soon as they can but that doesn't seem to be the case inside of the game. It seems to be the same way no matter what they cost which is kind of annoying. I also find it annoying that when you're actually talking to a sim and this becomes like the multi uh, the way the sort of multi chat system works inside of the game where you can talk to one sim and then talk to another sim but say be in the same group chat I will sometimes be talking to one sim and being like promoting them sell this product sell this product you want to you want to buy this you want to buy this and then I'll click on another sim and be like okay go and do the same thing to this guy in the other sim will just come over to this conversation they leave the object they're actually interested in they come over to this conversation so that's kind of annoying. I don't know why they keep doing it. Um, it's it's kind of annoying in the game. It still works. They still buy that other object, but it just doesn't look like a real retail situation because if I was interested in the cell phone, I'm not going to go all the way into the television department to talk to a retail associate. Like, I'm going to stay by said cell phone. And last, the brand new world, Magnolia Promenade, is way too small. It's only got four lots in it. Now I get it, there's probably some sort of reason in the back end why this is happening, but I personally don't understand why the worlds or the neighborhoods are so freaking small inside of The Sims 4. You can say, of course, if you're comparing this to The Sims 3, yeah, The Sims 3 had a whole bunch of lots, but of course this is a whole different game plan. But I often think about comparing this to The Sims 2, in which, of course, just like in The Sims 2, you were kind of locked to a lot, which is basically what we are now. Yes, you can walk around the neighborhood, but it doesn't really work, right? Like you can't interact inside of those lots without loading said lot. So if it's like The Sims 2, why is it that The Sims 2 could have like, I don't know, 50 lots in a neighborhood, but inside of The Sims 4, all they have is four. Also keep in mind, three of those lots are retail and one is residential. So you can't really live inside of this neighborhood. Now, of course you can convert lots into retail spaces, but let's go back to the main issue here. Even if you go back to the main worlds, there's only like 20 lots in the whole world. So I don't know why EA keeps being so sparse with their lot placement inside of the game. It's gotta be something. 
but I personally don't know why, and it's kind of aggravating that there aren't a lot of lots in the game, because I feel like you could have way more content in the game, because you could have a bigger gym, you could have more gyms, maybe you have two gyms, instead, right now, you got like one gym, and you're like, I can't build any more gyms, because I need that one for a library, and I need to have that as my club, and I need to have that as my retail space, I'm like, oh no, I'm out of lots. I don't know why that's a thing, there needs to be more lots inside of the game, and the fact that they included this new neighborhood, and they're like, there's a new neighborhood, there's only four lots, don't get overwhelmingly excited about it. But of course, that is my pros and cons of the brand new expansion pack, The Sims 4 Get to Work. I think overall, it's a really great expansion pack, I'm really happy to have it, I would highly recommend going to buy it, so check it out on Origin right now, you can pre-order it, if it is of course not the 31st, if it's after the 31st, then go and pick it up, you can digitally download it into your game and play it within a number of minutes, so it's super awesome, great game, great addition into the base game, of the game so i really like it out of a like score range here i would probably give it uh either i would say let's say like nine plum bobs out of ten like nine out of ten which is pretty much like bang on the only reason i'm removing one plum bob is simply because the neighborhood only has four lots so it's basically a 90 percent good game so i can't say anything better about that so if you want to check it out check it out for yourself but of course, that ends my pros and cons video, but I've created a bunch of other videos for you guys today. There are some uh, Let's Play videos inside of The Sims 4 Get to Work, and I even created a brand new building video with the brand new Get to Work items. So make sure you check those out on my channel. Make sure you also like and subscribe to this video and to my channel for future Sims 4 based content. Tell me in the comment section below what you think about the brand new game, and if you're excited about it, or if there's some problems with it you think EA should address, let me know in the comment section down below. Also, if you happen to be a Twitch person who enjoys watching live streams, well, I will be live streaming The Sims 4 Get to Work on Monday and Tuesday in the afternoon in North America, so make sure you check that out. If you're kind of on the fence or you have some questions about the game, come by to the live stream, ask me a question. I will try to demo it inside of the game before you purchase, because maybe I can solve some questions that you haven't got solved yet. And of course, that's what I'm here to do, help you guys out. So hopefully you enjoy that. Check that out at twitch.tv slash Gaming. There's a link in the description down below. Well, until next time, everyone, I'm Curtis Parody. Happy simming.